but I don't think it's a very big window of time and it's closing. But in this window of time, if we all get together, then we can start to heal some of the harm we've inflicted. Five years ago this week, the world unified in an expression of solidarity to save the planet and ourselves. The deal in Paris is the defining action plan of our times, and it's thanks to people like Jane Goodall who commit their entire lives to improving the global condition. Last year, I sat down with her to talk about her life as one of the world's best-loved personalities, who encourages us to transform the planet and our role within it. To celebrate Paris and to honour the promises we've made, the China Current looks back at this special conversation with Jane Goodall. <laughs> That simply means this is me, this is Jane. So. Where has the world failed to deliver and why has it failed to deliver? Well, I'm afraid the current state is we're going through pretty dark times and country after country after country is seeing the destruction of more and more of the environment and we're still pumping fossil fuels into the atmosphere. We're destroying forests, we're polluting the ocean, we're polluting the land. So it's not surprising that so many young people seem to have lost hope. Is it now asking too much for one country, China, to effect change on its own? If it was one country only, it would be useless. But actually it's not true. You know, on the one hand, you get new coal mines being opened. I think in China, certainly in Australia, um, in the United States. Um, on the other hand, China is doing so much with solar energy and wind energy. India is as well. And these are two of the most populous countries. So we've got to somehow find a balance if we care about the future. You went to Africa, to Kenya, as a very young woman. China is very active throughout the African continent in countries like Kenya, which you also call home. Because of this involvement, is it in a unique seat of opportunity to bring about a positive transformation in how it impacts the world? You know, you know perfectly well that China uh, is held responsible for a lot of <clears throat> environmental damage. Um, China is doing nothing different from colonialism, from the big corporations today. So the thing is that as China, and I've watched China gradually move more and more and more to protecting your amazing environment and they protect the animals in China, you know, from pandas to pangolins. Is what you describe called greed? Not necessarily. I mean, we need to, people to have houses. We need people to be able to have a decent life. Uh, we do need infrastructure, but I think the problem is maybe we're needing, we're thinking we need more than we actually need. And we've got to balance it. Otherwise, what's going to be like in a hundred years? If your mother was here and if she could hear you, what would you want her to know? What would you tell her? When I first had a dream that I would grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. Everybody laughed at me. I was just a girl, girls didn't do that sort of thing. We didn't have any money when I was growing up. Africa was far away from England. But my mother said, if you really want something, you have to work extremely hard and take advantage of every opportunity, but don't give up. I would just say, mom, what you said to me has proved to be so very important. And those words you said to me are truly making a difference. You also have an indomitable spirit. And Jane Goodall, the world thanks you for it. Thank you. I am James Chow. You're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.